What's going on, everyone? We're going to do a little technical analysis on the Triple Qs, which is the NASDAQ 100. So technically, on paper, we entered into a recession. The market does not care. We had strong reaction off of Amazon earnings currently trading in the after hour session of around 139 and even Apple as well, currently trading at 162 from 157. One thing that I do want to point out here, OK, the market will gap up if you're a day trader or, or a short term intraday trader. Definitely be careful on how high we gap up. If we do get pulled higher, check the stock that you're trading. Make sure that we're not running into any major areas of hourly supply or daily supply. OK, if you don't know what supply means, it's an area of resistance. What are some of the areas of resistance? They could be different moving averages. They could be different Bollinger Bands. They could be different uh, channels. You, you need to look. I got a lot of commotion going on on my screen here, but I like it that way. One reason why is I always kind of have a picture uh, clear idea as to where stocks are potentially going to stop and where potentially they're going to land. So what we are looking at here is a nice reaction off, you know, the 269 lows that we put in here on June the 16th. Have we had some red days in between? Yes, we have. Nothing is just going to go straight up. Nothing is just going to go straight down. Even, you know, prior to that, the, the last six, seven months on the big downward turn on this bear market, we have had aggressive rallies back up to the upside that were short lived back down to the downside. One thing that I do kind of want to point out here. You know, the bottom is not in, but the bulls are still going to get the benefit of the doubt. So ever since reclaiming that 50 day moving average, which is a very, very significant level, ever since reclaiming that uh, 50 day moving average, we have had more green days than red. The trend is definitely up, which is why I'm saying bulls are still going to have to get the benefit of the doubt until they prove us wrong. Now, we have a very clear line in the sand that we're going to kind of keep on watch. That is going to be the 50 day moving average. You can see here, once we tried to break above the 50 day moving average here on July the 18th, we got rejected, came back down and caught short term support at the five. Once we closed over the 50 day moving average here, we had a one, two, three, four day run up before a nice healthy pullback. So it was right in this time between the 25th, the 26th, a lot of people were saying, well, that's that's the end, right? We've got FOMC, we've got all these earnings coming, we've got possibilities of technical you know, recession happening, that's the end of the move, we're going back down lower. Lo and behold, we had a nice little gap up here, reclaim this channel level and the short-term sentiment moving average, which is the five-day moving average, and put in a nice test to the July 22nd highs. Today, not only did we confirm those highs, but ran all the way up into the next area of supply, which is this upper Bollinger Band. And we also have 311.50, which is going to be the 100 EMA. That is going to be our next landing zone. So right now, currently at July the 28th, at 3.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Obviously, we know that Amazon is doing unbelievable things in the after hours off of earnings, as well as Apple. That's really going to pull the ETFs higher. I do expect a gap up going into tomorrow because currently we're already trading at $313. So we closed at 309.81 and currently trading at 313.50, which is a good solid three and a half, four points higher off the close. So if we kind of look at where that puts us, that puts us over this supply zone here. So this is the initial break of the 100 EMA. Now our next area, major area of resistance is going to be 313.92, which is the 100 SMA. That's also going to correlate back here if we kind of go back to 620, uh, uh, June the 2nd, right? If we look at June the 2nd when we ran into this supply channel here and then got rejected, that area was it going to act as a strong area of resistance. So not only do we have prior price action from almost two months ago, but we also have this 100 SMA here. So depending on what we do in the overnight session and the pre-market session, here is what I want you guys to keep in mind. If we're able to breach that 314 area, 
okay and let's say we get some pullback into rising support let's say anywhere between 310 311 309 even if we get those pullbacks we get some consolidation and we break through and close over 314 extremely bullish for the bears the next pit stop that we are going to be looking at and trying to target is going to be 322. Now, along that process, you're gonna see some of your favorite names like Tesla, Nvidia, Amazon, Apple, uh, um, uh, Facebook, which is Meta, uh, Tesla, all these stocks, AMD, you're gonna see all these triple Q stocks starting to get pulled up with it. So one thing to kind of manage is the triple Qs. If you wanna just play the triple Qs, we need to get over the 314 area, put in a high. We need to pull back, small pullback, one to $2. We need a consolidation. And when we take out the new high, that's your entry to get long. If you're looking to use the triple Qs as your gauge, as soon as we get over 314 and we get over that, and we hold that area, you're gonna to wanna to look to your favorite stocks, whether it be Microsoft, Nvidia, Amazon, whatever you're gonna be looking at. And then you're gonna to wanna to check their daily timeframes and see what's the next area of supply that we're gonna be targeting. And you're gonna to wanna to take those stocks through their highs. Now, as long as we hold the five day moving average, I am going to be bullish. Technically, I'm still going to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt until they lose 393. If we lose $393 on a close, all bets are off. I will switch back immediately to short biased and look to short stocks through their lows. $293, okay? $293 is the 50-day moving average. If the bulls lose $293 at any point, I will go back to short biased. As long as we hold 302 and as long as we hold 293, I will be looking to kind of ignore the pullbacks intraday wait for them to kind of catch support on the hourly time frame and i'm going to look for those to either bounce those stocks that i want to trade or i'm going to look to take them through the high of day whatever you know whatever has more room to run into that next supply zone i hope that helps guys we got to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt i know some of the news still is not bad but here's what I want to say, okay? Here's what I'm going to leave you guys with, especially looking around on social media. A lot of people are saying, I can't believe you guys can be bullish. I can't believe that people, you know, aren't seeing the news, the headlines, the, the numbers, the, everything is there. Everything is there that we're in a recession. Everything is there that we should be going lower. I don't agree with, I don't necessarily not agree with you, okay? But I will tell you this from almost seven years of trading these markets, okay? the more you try to think and come up and formulate your own opinion on what you think the market is going to do nine times out of ten you're going to be wrong you have to just react to the price action next week could be could we lose the 50-day moving average lose 293 dollars and be trading down towards 270 absolutely but i'm not going to sit here and try to time the top and tell myself well let me just go ahead and start putting on short positions here because i don't think the market is correct and i think we're going lower that is preposterous you're going to get your face ripped off if you are a short-term trader meaning you're not an investor holding things for three to five years you have to go with the day's sentiment. You have to go with the overall trend. You cannot try to pick a side and predetermine where the stock is going to go just based on what you think. You have to just react to what is actually happening. You will be a lot more happier. You will make a lot more money and you will be a lot less stressed. If you guys are looking to learn how to day trade options, come into this market, short-term trade on a day in and day out basis, visit evolutiontraders.com get access to both of my uh, video courses showing you guys my strategy and how i'm using that how i'm teaching over a hundred students how to do that as well join the discord that link is down in the description box below and i will catch you guys all in the next video